Jess Lujan. We're back with main studio guest, Mr. John Dovis from San Francisco, making some heavy accusations against the Archbishop of Guam, Anthony S. Aperon. Mr. Dovis, let me, let me ask you this, uh, this point here. Um, would you take an independent, disinterested party's, um, someone that you can take a polygraph, uh, you sit down with a disinterested party that, is, that can take a polygraph of you that what you're saying is true? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and so you, you swear that everything you're saying is 100% truthful. Absolutely. You, you told me there were some conditions that if you confronted the Archbishop, a couple of them I, I, I think were, were very doable. The, I think the other two or other three are almost impossible. But I'll let, you, I'll let you say and let the audience decide again what is probably the most doable versus the impossible <laughs> at this point. And they're the ones who need to decide. Okay. They're the ones who need to act. Um, I, I demand that he accept responsibility for the molestation, uh, that he reinstate Monsignor Beneventi and reinstate Father Goffigan. I demand that he step down, and I think that's going to be the toughest part of it. Mm -hmm. I, I'd also like to add that I do want him to stop abusing the church and abusing the church's money for his lavish lifestyle. It's a decadent lifestyle that he lives, and the people here are suffering and still giving in to the coffers, or maybe not as much anymore. Hmm. And uh, he'll probably be paying lawyers, those lawyers with uh, the church's money. Mm -hmm. Now, he also said, um, um, actually, in an exclusive with KUAM, that he was going to file. He, he hadn't mentioned who the defamation of character lawsuit will be against. Either Archbishop John Charles Tobis, and that's uh, from Agate. So I welcome you. And I think as soon as you do it, the church can be begin healing. You need to do the right thing. Now, when these alleged incidents supposedly occurred in those years. <clears throat> how long did this last? How, how long a period of time did these occurrences, uh, I mean, you know, was it over a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a couple of years? A couple of years, couple of years, at least. Mm -hmm. um, and I noticed the... So it, it wasn't a one-time occurrence? No, no. I noticed the change in mood over time with my relative uh, we used to be very, very chummy in the beginning, and then he started to draw further and further away. And I know he was a shy person to begin with, but I got a sense that he was really withdrawing. Um, at the seminary in Los Altos, I paid him a compliment, and he... Uh, was very put off by it, and I was thinking it was just a compliment. Did he continue his studies to become a priest? Uh, he stopped after his breakdown, and it was very traumatic for him. Uh, he was hospitalized for it, and I think he can really Mm -hmm. reach full healing once mm -hmm. he gathers the courage to come mm -hmm. forward. Now, you obviously here, you haven't been back for, for years. So yeah, a long couple, time. A couple of decades, actually. Um, <clears throat> you're fortunate your, your mom and dad are still alive. We spoke about this. Uh, how do your mom and dad feel about, about you coming forward with this? Uh, my dad's in, uh, uh, has given me 100% support. My mother does support me, but uh, being the 
wonderful, overly protective, good old Chamorro mother, uh, she'd rather I not be doing this because she doesn't want to see her boy hurt, and I understand that. Um, so at the moment, she's probably not too pleased with me. And you didn't warn her you're going you're, you're gonna to be on the set tonight, right? I did no. not. Okay. Well, you're going to get a whipping anyway from mom. You know how moms I, are, right? <laughs> I'm going to beg for forgiveness. <laughs> there we go. What age were your cousin at that time of these occurrences? He was most probably between somewhere between 16 and 19. 16, 19, okay. 16 and 18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a year older than he mm -hmm. is. Okay. So actually, you know, the, the um, age of consent is obviously when the age of consent. It was way it, before then. Way, oh, way before then that it happened. Well, the age of consent, oh. Yeah, no, no, I mean, when, when, when these occurrences, supposedly these occurrences happened, we're 17 and 18, they, these are, I mean. He was it, 17 or 18. Or 18 at the time. Was this consensual? I don't think so. Hmm. Um, anything else that you want to tell the, the Archbishop? Uh, and, and then, again, why now, 30 plus years later? I just see the destruction of the island church. Mm -hmm. uh, I see him causing a lot of suffering, uh, firstly to my two good dear friends who are wonderful priests. Mm -hmm. It's obvious that the parishioners really care for them. I was approached today um, by one of their parishioners who thanked me profusely, and I wasn't able to finish my fried rice. But it was, it was wonderful to have somebody approach me and just thank me for supporting uh, the Monsignor. Now, you, you also had a message out there. How can people get a hold of you? You want victims? Uh... Yes, um, I can be reached at uh, johncharlestovis at gmail.com. Okay. And uh, I have a contact number uh, while I'm here on the island. And that is... Uh, 987 5752. Okay. 987 5752. Okay. And even if you are not the victim but have information, please call me. I, I believe he needs to be held responsible and all of this insanity needs to stop mm -hmm. and only the people need to. And tomorrow, Help. you're you're going to attempt to confront the Archbishop up at the Chancery at 10 a.m. 10 o'clock, 10, 10 a.m. in the morning. 10 a.m. Yeah. tomorrow morning, Thursday morning, right? Yes. We're going to take a quick break, come back and say goodbyes All and right. good luck. Be right back.